Joshua chapter 1, put a pin in that, and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Everybody in Joshua chapter 1? If you're in Joshua chapter 1, raise your hand. If you had Joshua chapter 1, raise your hand. Who's not looking for Joshua chapter 1? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not looking for a raise your hand. <laughs> Maybe it's just say it like this. And look, I learned a long time ago, just because a preacher saying he's reading from the Word, don't take it for granted that he reads it right. Amen? Amen? So if you got a Bible in front of you, you need to look for Joshua. And if you, have a, and if you don't know what Joshua is, today is the day to learn. Amen? <laughs> Because we're going to wait for you for a minute. Okay, Joshua chapter 1. Show of hands. Okay, that, that's bad. <laughs> okay, and Matthew 6.33. So put a pen in 633 right now. We're going to read Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read 1 through 3. Then I'm going to read verses 7 and 8. Joshua chapter 1. Verses 1. Two and three, then I will read verses seven and eight. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto a land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I had said unto Moses. Starting at verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper, whither soever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and oh, excuse me, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And Matthew 6.33 says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. <laughs> and we're going to talk about one thing God cannot do. One thing God cannot do. Amen? Amen. We all know that God can do everything, but there's one thing He cannot do. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this word that you've given us today. And we ask that you would open us up, Father, as we receive this word. And that we will receive your mindset from this word. And that we will accept this word so that we can grow in your grace. Because you so love us. So let us hear from you this message today. Move us out of the way. You just come through with the Holy Spirit and just shine in our hearts and in our minds that we will receive the saith the Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the one thing God cannot do. Now in the word of God we watch, read, and believe time time again that God can do anything. And we know and believe that God can do everything. So I guess somebody may be wondering what is this man talking about? If God can do everything, what can he do? What can God do? Now let's look at some of the stuff we've seen of God. We've seen God produce miracle after miracle. We have seen God change the course of nature. We have seen God do the impossible. We have seen God make a way 
out of nowhere. We know for a fact that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. So what is it that God cannot do? What is it that God can't do? Didn't God create this world out of nothing? Yeah. Genesis said this earth was formed and born and faceless and nothing was going on, and God just formed this world out of nothing. Yeah. So if God formed this world out of nothing, what can God not do? Didn't God's people get stuck at the tip of the Red Sea? Yeah. Hey, no way out. And God opened up the Red Sea so Moses and his people could go through the Red Sea. Didn't God, so what can God not do? Didn't God tear down the walls of Jericho? Not by a mighty hand, but just by some people shouting at the walls, and the walls came down flat on God's word alone. If God can do that, what can God not do? Didn't God help a little shepherd boy named David beat up a massive giant named Goliath? The odds were all against them, but David hit him with one rock, and the giant fell down dead, flat. Didn't God help him do that? If God can do that, what can God not do? What can he not do? Didn't we see three Hebrew boys go into this fire and furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, people burning up around them, but never to know this has a determined to send them in say throw them in. And he threw them in the fiery furnace. And then those same three boys come out without a sin in them. If God can do that, what is this preacher talking about that God can't do something? Daniel, in the lion's den, lion hungry and all out of the door. They would have ate a bag of potato chips and you. They did not care. But then Daniel go in to the lion's den and God set them by. And Daniel came out when the king said, Daniel, are you in there? Yes, old king. My God delivered. If God can do that, what can God now do? Didn't God, when Paul and Silas were in a jail cell, beating all because they saved a little girl from a demon, beating them, thrown into a jail cell, and it said that midnight Paul and Silas just got together a hymn and started saying, shake, 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 shake everything off. And the chains started falling, the jail started shaking and rocking, and oh my goodness, and they released him. And Paul stayed to proclaim the word of the Lord because they were put in wrong, and God had made a way so they could get out. So if God had did that for Paul and Silas and got them out of that jail situation, what can God not do? Did God send his son who healed the blind, who healed the lame, who healed the deaf, who even raised the dead, through, sent his son through an immaculate conception, through a virgin? Oh, yeah. If God can do that, what can he not do? If God can have his only begotten son die on the cross. And three days later, raise him up from the dead. For our benefit, what can God not do? Now I'm saying all this because it is something that God cannot do. And you're probably looking at me like, now what is it can he do? Since you're saying all of this stuff that he's done. So, Anybody want to know what he can do? Yeah. One thing God cannot do. God cannot break his word. I need to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Because I think somebody didn't hear it. God cannot break his word. Joshua says this. Joshua 1 8. See, after Moses died, God's people were going to move on and they were going to the promised land. They hadn't made it yet. They just made it to the temple. And God was going to take his people to the promised land. So God told them this. 
This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all things that is written in the book of the law. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God cannot break his word. He was basically, and the promise he told Joshua still is the promise that he's given us today. He was telling, God was telling Joshua, if you stay with me, if you stay with my word, you will be successful. If you get out of my word and don't do my word, you won't be successful. You're going to be very unsuccessful. See, because God can't break his word. See, the thing is, just because we're used to being lied to, and just because we're used to telling lies, and just because we're used to breaking our word and having people's word broken against us, we think God does it too. Because we're so inclined to do it. I mean, we hear lies all the time. From politicians, from preachers, from, um, you know, good old-fashioned Christians, from sinners in the street, we hear lies all the time. So because we hear lies all the time, we think God will break his word too. God can't break his word. Word says if God broke his word, God would have to destroy himself because there's no power in the universe higher than God. So he, he has a clause against breaking his own word. He would have to destroy himself. So God cannot break his word. God says if we stay with him, he will stay with us, and we're going to have good success. And because he said in the word that we're going to have good success, it makes me believe that it is a bad success. Because if you don't stay with his word, you're going to do things bad. And if we follow the Bible, when the people of God follow God's word, things happen good. When they did not follow God's word, things happen bad. Because God is not bound to doing what we feel like doing. He's bound to his word. And just because we feel like, don't feel like doing his word, don't mean God's going to go with us. See, we do things and we sin and we do things and we say, then we want God to bless. But God doesn't have to bless our mess. The only thing God blesses is his word. Why? Because he got to keep his word. God cannot break his word. And we keep trying from time to time again to make God break his word. When we, we get mad at somebody and we say, God, give it. <laughs> now, we try to make God break his word because God tells us to love everybody. If he's telling us to love everybody, why are we saying give it? <laughs> and then we wonder why God don't give it because he can't break his word. If God got it because you said give him, you know God broke his word. Yes. So God can't break his word. That's one thing he can't do. And we need to get into our minds right now that God is not going to break his word. Just because we start acting crazy don't mean God's going to act crazy with us. You know, if we, we can go ahead and do, we can go, go ahead and call sin right. And we can do wrong and, make, and call wrong right. But that doesn't mean God's going to have to go with us. Because he's not going to go with us because God does not break his word. God's going to stay with us. So if you start hating and want to hate and say, well, God, I hate him. And you know, no, God don't know you. Because in order for God to understand your hate, he would have to break his word. That's why Jesus said we need to love everybody. And Jesus didn't just say love everybody. Jesus said love as I love you. Then he love everybody. So Jesus put all the laws away because Jesus didn't want us to break God's word. So if you need your hate, no wonder you got migraine headaches, you got ulcers and all that other stuff. Because you're breaking God's word. And if you broke God's word, God is going to give you the healing and the prosperity that you he told the people of Israel, if you stay by my law, if you stay from, according to my word, my will, and my way, I will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Isn't it good health prosperity? Because sometimes we get so much junk in us, the junk makes us sick. And then we wonder why we're sick. Man, you need to let off some of that stuff. All those people that you can't forgive, you just need to stop forgiving them. I guarantee you, you get better. All those headaches that you get, and just about everybody, not everybody I know, but a whole, a big percentage of people always get headaches on Friday when they go to work. Because <laughs> they have to build up those schools all week long, now you got a headache. Because you're going in now, your head's split. Forget about them. Put it on the Lord, give it to the Lord. God will heal you, and Friday will be a joy in that headache. And I ain't telling you, I ain't. I didn't get that from the Bible. I got that from when I was working. Yeah. Because I found every Friday, I had a headache. And I was wondering, and I had a headache. I was like, I have a headache on Friday. <laughs> he said, let those people go. No, 
they didn't do what you want. No, they didn't come in. No, they called out. Yeah, they came back late for lunch. Let them go. And when I let them go, guess what happened in on Friday and Saturday when I had to work? Was not a headache. Amen. Amen. Because some of the things we do to ourselves because of the stuff that we hold on, we make ourselves sick. Yes, Lord. Because that's not prosperity. And what we're trying to do is get God to go against his word. And God is not obligated to go against his word because whenever he goes against his word, we start getting confused. That's why somebody can tell you the truth, but you won't believe the truth because you're going to believe a lie because you decide to go against God's word instead of hope. That's why people will run to a good piece of juicy gossip instead of the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do it all the time. You know, people be good enough to office. Oh, I got to get my stories. Man, they be running out of office and running home. <laughs> you tell me you got a church service going on. I, they ain't running no church. They're not running to get the truth, but they're running to get their gossip from a TV set. But somebody <laughs> don't even know who wrote the script. <laughs> Come on now. Somebody just needs to make it say, you should be pretty good, Pastor. <laughs> and that's what we do, because we get away from God's word. We need to get back on God's word, because God ain't going to leave his word. Because that's the one thing he can do. All these good things he can do, is one thing he can do, and he can't break his word. He's not going to leave his word to make us feel good. You know, if you want it, you better come get it. Washington Post got to add, if you don't get it, you don't get it. <laughs> you know, if you don't get God's word, you ain't going to get it just by sitting at home wondering, oh, I'm a good saint at home. Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Real saint at home. When God's word says forsake not the fellowship of the saints, if God's word says that, why God going to say you're a good saint sitting at home? He would have to go against his own word. Yeah. And since we know God can't break his word now, how you going to be a good saint sitting at home? Yes. Well, you want God to agree with you? I don't think so. God ain't on. Let's make a deal. He's not trying to agree with you. He's not showing you a window number one, two, or three. He's, God's saying you're going to do it my way. Or guess what? You're going to see me one day. And if you see me, you better hope I say, come on in. Instead of stay on out. Because if you stay on out, you know what that means. Everybody know what that means? We yeah. I'm talking about the girl again. 